Boker Tov. Today's daf Yomi is Kisuvos 98. Today's daf Yomi, we're going to start on the top of 98A. Ayi Itisa, there was a woman, the Tafsa Kasa de Kaspa Biksuvasa, that she grabbed a cup of silver as part of her Ksuva. Meaning to say her ksuba, her dowry was worth more than a silver cup, but she wanted to pay off part of her ksuba by just grabbing the silver cup. And so therefore, since she hasn't paid off her entire ksuba yet, she wants to get also her ongoing support, which is called mizonos, katava mizone. So she asks for mizonos to pay off her ongoing support because the ancient she, she hasn't received her whole ksuba yet. Asla kaime de Rava, so she came in front of Rava, Amr said to the orphan, He says, go give her the ongoing support. Because we don't we don't follow the position of Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Shimon was of the position that if you receive the portion of the money, then you can't get any mizonos anymore. He says, once you get part of the Ksuv, it's like you received all of it and she's given, she's forfeited her right to Mizonos. So, so Rabbi said, we don't follow that position of Rabbi Shimon. We follow the position of the Rabbanon who say, until you pay the whole Ksuv, you're still entitled to your Mizonos. Let's say a woman sells off her Ksuv, but she doesn't sell it in, she sells off part of the land to either pay her ksuva or to pay her mizonos, but she doesn't, she does, she, but she doesn't sell in front of the bezin. Does she need, does she get, does she need to take an oath that she didn't take too much money, more than she claimed, or does she not need to take an oath? Gemara says, Why don't you ask the question, does she need to do a achraza, that before you sell property of the heirs, the court, before they sell, the court needs to do a proclamation and wait 30 days that we're selling it or take out ads in the local newspapers. That's called Akhraza. But why, does, why don't we ask the question if she needs to do this Akhraza? So on our way, so, so, so the, he responds, Rabbi says, I didn't ask about Akhraza. Akhraza will come by him. Akhraza, I'm not asking about that. I'm Rabbi Zera, I'm Rabbi Nachman. The reason why I'm not asking about Akhraza is because Rabbi Zera said in the name of Nachman, Amana Shashama Ara that it says a woman, she took the land, she didn't sell it, she took it straight for herself, she evaluated, she said, I'm entitled to a cube of a million dollars. She took a parcel of land from the estate, she said, I, I think this is a million dollars. Boom. And Mar says, No, that's nothing. Now, what is that? What's that case we're referring to where we say that woman who just tried to seize a piece of land from the estate and say, this was her own evaluation. Where do we say it's nothing? What's the scenario? If she actually did a proclamation of 30 days, then then why is that considered nothing? So it must be that she didn't do the proclamation. And when she doesn't do a proclamation for herself, it's nothing. But if she sold somebody else without a proclamation, Masha, Asta, Asta. So then it is valid. So the Gemara says, no, Olam the Achros. No, really, she did do a proclamation. With the Amrila, with the Amrila, so really, so the case is, uh, we're talking about the case where the case where of Nachman said where the woman took it for herself, she did do a proclamation. And what's the reason why we say to her, with Amrila, man, she, Shamach, and what's the reason why we say to her, who gave you? Who did this evaluation? No, it's like a case of a sir man that the that they deposited it with him is kiste diam. Rash says maspo, like a type of uh, animal feed that they gave that belonged to the orphans. Azal shamo and he evaluated himself by Abramea uh, and he valued himself. It says worth four hundred yaker, and then it became more. It went up in price. Come to shismea. And now it's worth 600. So also, I made the Rabbi Ami, I'm away, man, Shamwech. And so he came to Rabbi Ami, and, 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 and can, he says, can I get those extra 200 hours? He said, he said, man, Shamwech, who, who gave you permission? Meaning to say, 
so that's so that's the case we're referring to. Uh, that the, the case of a deposit. But really, we are talking about a case where she did, uh, where she was shown, where she did, did do the evaluation. Uh, so. So the Gemara says, the law is that in the case of this woman uh, who sells the land, she does require an oath, but she does not require a chraza in the court. She does require an oath, she doesn't require a chraza. Maybe she doesn't require the chraza because of the two explanations we saw in yesterday's staff. The Gemara doesn't say it here, but maybe it's Mishum Khino, or maybe because. Uh, because we want her to ha- uh, have an easier time getting married, or maybe we don't want to be misbaza or to go to the bez, and it's going to be disrespectful to her that she has to go through the bureaucratic process of going through the court. It says the Mishnah, I'd say there was a widow whose ksuva was 200. I'd say there's a woman whose ksuva was 200, and she, and she sold her, her ksuva, which was worth, she had $100, $100 left in the Ksuba, but she's entitled to 200 and she sold that piece of land, which was 100 she sold it for 200 Oshava Masayim, or she sold, sold something that was worth 200 but she undersold it for only 100 Iman and Iskabu Ksuba. So she say at this point, her Ksuba, she's, she's done. She's out. She got her old Ksuba. So she is asking the question, I thought there's something called Ona. So that you're not allowed to overcharge by more than a sixth. But the principle is, ain't on all of our coast, that we don't say the law of ona by real estate. By real estate, we don't say ona because it's something that everybody wants. So there's no ona of our coast. So the Gemara then says, Isaac Suvasa Mana, let's say her Ksuva was 100, Umachra Shava Mana Vidinar Bimana, and she sold something that was worth 101 and she undersold it, she sold it for her Mana. Then Machra Batal, her sale is nullified. And I feel he omeris, even if she says, Achsir Dinar Yorshin, even if she says, I'm going to return this extra dinar that I that I took away from the heirs, I'm going to return it to the heirs, still Machra Batal, it's nullified. Rashbag says, Oh, Machra Kayim, Rashbag says, it's always going to be her sale is valid. As long as as long as, uh, as long as there is enough there to sell as a field. Rashi says, in the overcharging, if there wouldn't be this overcharging, there would be remaining in the field, either Bas Tisha Kavin, or Ona Atzma Tisha Kavin. There would be a minimum of that amount remaining. Or if the heirs have at least nine kavim. The Kimin the Ashley Yasomim Karka Sham Kashir Sada, because the, since the heirs have uh, the amount of a field, Yomru, uh, they'll say to her, We went, we didn't want to sell this field that we could have used. Well, see, Dustin Kuhn, but if they all know it's so small that they couldn't even join it together to a field, they didn't lose anything. And that's what Rashbag is saying, though. The sale is valid. As long as there's enough to, that you can make a field from it. But if there wasn't enough to make a field, then she cost them. What's the field? Bastisha Kabin, Ubagina by Garden Bas, Fatsika, Ayafa Kabu, Kudrebi Akiva. By base rova, Rav Kiva says a quarter. I say ksuva sa arba meyaz. Let's say ksuva was four hundred zuz. Machro zeb mana or zeb mana. She sold to the first three people for each one hundred. The achro nyafem mana the dinner. And to the last person, she sold it uh, something that was worth mana uh, the dinner, a mana and a dinner. And she sold it for only a mana. Then we're going to say shal achro mbato. The last one is valid, but shal kuah machon kaim. But the earlier ones, it's all going to be valid. Okay.
Okay. So then, okay, so now we say, what's the reason why we say that if it was worth 200 and she sold it for mana, that we're going to say that under those circumstances, she lost her ksuva. The Amula, they say to her, Atif Sadat, Shava Mana, Atif Sadat. You cost us the money because it was worth 200 and you sold it for 100. So you cost us the money. You lost us the ksuva. We, had a, we gave you something to sell that was worth 200. But then the same thing, Shava Mana, the Masayim, why if it was worth 100 and she sold it for 200, Nami Tema, she could say, Ana Arvachna, she could say, I made the money. Uh, I, I made you an extra 100 hours. Why should I lose? I made the extra money for myself. Why should I lose the ksuba? I took a piece of property. You go and give me something that's worth 100, and I sold it for 200. So I'm Rav Nachman, I'm Rav Ravua. So Rav Nachman tells the name of Rav Ravua. The reason is, Khan Chana Rebbe, this is what Rebbe taught, I call a bar miles, that uh, all the money goes to the bar miles, that, that if, you, if you're an agent and you go out and you sell something for more than it was worth, the extra money goes to the Bauhamos. The extra money goes to the, the person who has the money, the owner of the money. To the Tanya, we went to the Braitsa, Hosifuo Acha Let's say he sends uh, he sends an agent to the store for him, and the seller, the shopkeeper, adds on one extra. Everything goes to the agent. That's the position of Rabbi Yehuda, whereas Rabbi Yossi says, Hulkin, that the agent splits it with the money man, with the owner of the money. Now, but how can we say that they split it? But we have a different price. So it says, Rabbi Yossi says, everything goes to the owner of the money. So it depends whether or not there's a fixed amount, there's a fixed price for the product that he's purchasing. That if there's a fixed price, that's what Rabbi Yossi says, we don't know who he intended to give it to, to the agent or to the owner of the money. But if there's no fixed price, then we assume it all goes to the owner of the money. So, I'm Rabbi, so that's why Rabbi Merham explains Rabbi Yossi's position. So, 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 and so therefore, in our case, since there's no fixed price on the real estate, we're going to say it all goes to the owner of the money, which are the heirs and not the widow. If there's a fixed price, but if there's no fixed price, I call a power mass. It goes to the owner of the money, like Rabbi Yossi. My Kamash. And so what's what Papa telling us? This is exactly what Rav Yossi said. This is exactly how we learned what Rav Yossi said. No, he's telling us, Shinuya de Shanina, Shinuya, he's telling us that which we learned. That's how we had to learn properly. That's what Rav Yossi said. That was the Shinuya, that we learned it properly. That's what he's telling us. He asked the question, he says to the agent, the owner of the money says to the agent, Zabin Lisla, go sell for me a, a portion of the field which is called a Lesach. But also on the agent one, the agent, the agent sold for Makura, double Lesach. Makura, uh, Lesach is half a Kur. So the agent went and sold him double the Lesach. My, so do, what do we say? Is it a valid sale? Do we say Mosif al Varfu? Do we say that the agent was just adding on to the owner of the money's words? And so nevertheless, it's a valid sale. Okay, granted, he didn't sell beyond the Lesach, but the Lesach is a valid sale. Odilma Mabir al or maybe he's he's undone, he's done done everything that the agent told him to do. He didn't he, he transgressed on the agent's on the owner's uh, instruction. And so therefore the Lesach is not even a valid sale. Even the Lesach is not a valid sale. So I'm Rav Yaakov Mina Harpakon, Mishmeda Ravina. So Rav Yaakov from the Harpakod says the name of Ravina Tashma. Come and learn it. Amr Barabayas Lashucho. The, the agent, the owner says to his agent, so this comes from the laws of Megillah, the, the agent says, the owner of the money says to the agent, he has a, a box filled with pieces of meat and he says to his agent, give a piece of meat to the guests. He doesn't realize that that piece of meat was hectic. He doesn't realize it was sacred meat. And so therefore, if the agent would give it, the person who told him to give it is a violation of Megillah. So he says, and and the agent said to the guest, take two pieces. And the guest took three pieces. So we say under those circumstances, all of them have violated 
the, the prohibition of me'ila, of misusing temple property. The owner, because he said, give them a piece. The agent, because he said, take two pieces. And the guest, because they took a third piece. So we see from here that it's like, it's an answer, that if the agent does more than what he asks, it's considered Mosif and not Mavir. Because, so, so we say, yeah, if you say that he's like adding on to his words, that's why the Baal is Mo. But if you're saying that he's completely transgressing his words, am I mo? Then why is the agent? Then why is the owner considered mo? The agent completely undid what the owner told him to do. So the Gemara says, and don't we say in the Mishnah, that if the agent does the shlichus, so but if he doesn't do his agency, shliach mo. The agent has done the me'ila. So why is the owner considered to have mal here? Isn't it proof that it's Moses? The Mara says, no, Achabayaskina, no. Here, what's the kimta, what's the case? The Amr, we said to him, Tlu Achas Midai to Shabbat Abayas, take one from the, uh, take one of them from the Dai to Shabbat Abayas, for Achas Midai Ti, take one of them from the Baal Abayas, and so meaning he followed the Baal Abayas's Shlichus, and do one from my own. And they shako in utras, and they took a third. So there, he was clearly not following the guidance of the Baal bias. Tashma, we have another. So let's try to bring a proof from our Mishnah. Let's say her ksuva was one hundred. And she sold something that was worth one hundred and one for one hundred. Machar batal. Then we say the wholesale is nullified. Didn't she just do motif? So if if if, if she does motif. The lower sales should be should be okay. So my love, isn't the case we're talking about the Shava Mana Vadina or Bamana Vadina? Or are we talking about a case where she sold something that's worth 101 for 101? Why the mana? What does it mean that she sold it for mana? Mana shala, she sold it for her 100. And we're going to say that it's still the sale is nullified, so it's like Mavir. Maya Filu, a filu he omeras afiras adina yorshim. And even if she says, I'm going to return the dinar to the heirs, the dinar mikarkai, from the dinar of the land, the katani machar bottle, and she's saying that, uh, uh, and we're still saying it's going to be nullified. So doesn't this prove that if the agent is mosif, it's nullified? I'm Rafun, brother of Nelson, no. He says no. Well, but the ozil. No, what, what we're talking about in this case is that she sold a piece of property that was worth one hundred and one. She sold it for one hundred, and so therefore it's nullified because she she made a mistake and she she sold it for the wrong price. Mar says no. It can't be that. That's what we're talking about. That's a case of the ozil. How many the safe of the ozil from the fact that the next clause is a case where she sold the last piece of property that was 101, she sold it for 100. Then the next clause, the first clause would not be with Ozil, because why would the Mishnah, as Rashi says, have to take us two case, have to teach us two cases where she undervalued the property? Now we know that the next case is the case of Ozil, to Katani Seifa, as the next clause says, if Ksuva was 400 Zuz, it says in the last case, the last case there is where she, it was Oza, where she undervalued the amount of money. And there we say it's nullified. And for everybody else, the sale is valid. The Gemara says, no. Both cases are cases where she undervalued it. And what's the Seifa teaching us? Time of the Ozil Bidiasme. Now, what's the reason why the sale is disqualified? Is because she, uh, the, the, the reason why it's disqualified is because she made a mistake on the last one. The Azul the Asmi, she undervalued it on the, on the last, last one. So therefore she took money away from the heirs because she had nothing against them because it was the last one. But if she would make the mistake on one of her own, but if she would make the mistake on one of the earlier ones where she still had money against the, the heirs, then it will be valid. Rashi says, she made a mistake on one of the earlier ones. And there was her own mistake. 
because she has still more money to take from them, then it's a valid sale, valid sale. And so therefore then it'll be valid. So the Gemara says, but, but the Gemara is going to go on. The Gemara says, but just a little bit more. The Gemara says, but then when we learn this out from the ratio where it says like Suvas, this idea that if she undervalues it on her own, it's valid, but on the heirs, it's not valid. Because we said in the ratio, it says if she sold something that was 200 for 100, the ksuva is valid. And so we see from here that even though she undervalued it, uh, if it was her own money, it's a valid sale. He might says, no, Maldutim, he might have thought there, awesome to stock on the high base of Gamri. There is a complete, she completely sold everything. And so there's nothing left in the estate. But here we're saying, no, no, so now here she might come to do it on the last one. And, and so therefore, uh, we're gonna, we might have thought that. And so therefore, Kamash, well, we don't see that. All right, we'll stop here. Mincha today is at 625, just so people know, but the da-